second part of the Pokemon database tutorial. As you can see, I've been a little bit cheeky in the meanwhile, and I've added in some labels above all of my list boxes that just have the appropriate column name. That's only because I'd like to be able to see what the heck all this stuff is. So if somebody doesn't know that Beedrill is the name of a Pokemon, they're not going to know. So I made sure that I put the name just above it. I also quickly put Pokemon Database on the top of my form. So before we do any more coding, what I want to do is just make this a little bit more functional. Right now, when I click on one of these guys, I can click on a completely different ID, completely different type, and a completely different nature, and a completely different cuteness value. What I'm going to do is quickly show you how when you click on one of these list boxes, it highlights an entire row for every other list box. It's a little bit tedious, but it works all right. Let's start with the ID. We're going to have to code each of these list boxes, but that shouldn't be too bad. Let's double click on this bad boy. Let's have a look at the event that's automatically come up. It's selected index change. So that means that when you select a different item in the list box, which is exactly what we want. So what are we going to do? We're going to match the selected index to all other list boxes. I hope that makes sense. So when we click on, let's say, the third item in the LS T ID, then it's going to select the third index in every other list box, just like that. It's actually very, very easy. You just, but tedious, unfortunately. LST names dot selected index this time equals LST ID selected index. So whatever they selected in the ID list box, put it in names, and we're literally going to copy that for the rest of the other text boxes. So LST van. What did I have? LST types, LST natures, LST cuteness value. I think that's all of them. And leave the right hand side as LST ID. So if I quickly run this program, I can show you what it looks like. So, and even if I use the keys on the keyboard, it'll follow it up and down. I'm actually going to leave it up to you, everybody, that when I click on the name, type, nature, or cuteness value, it's going to do the exact same thing that ID is doing there. All right? But again, I'm leaving that entirely up to you. That is your job to do. All right. Let's quickly get it so that when we double click on one of these guys, so any of the IDs, so any IDs, names, types, nature, cuteness value, it's going to bring up a form which has got just their information filtered on it. And then we're going to have a little box underneath which is going to be their evolution. So if I double click on Kakuna, it'll have Kakuna's information at the top, and then underneath in a group box, it'll have Beedrill's information. Right. And then we'll work on adding a Pokemon later. So let's right click on our project, add a Windows form, and here's best off being called form Pokemon, and I'm going to call it with evolution. All right, let's quickly add the fields in there. I'm going to be really stingy about this. I'm going to put a label on the left, this is going to look ugly. You can change it to whatever you want. And I'm going to put a text box on the right. Match up that pink line. Stretch them out a little bit. Okay. And that's going to be for the name. So let's copy and paste this. Because I'm going to have name, I'm going to have type, I'm going to have nature and cuteness value. Just there, like that. I just want to click off. There we go. All right, now let's put in a group box. So come to your toolbox. I'm going to type in group. There's a group box. Group boxes are really handy for grouping controls together. All right, now I'm going to be really, really cheap, and I'm going to copy these four text boxes by holding control and just pop them in the group box. Now it's time to settle this up. I'm going to just change the, cap or sorry, the text on the labels in the group box and then rename all the text boxes. I'm not going to name the labels, however, because we're not going to be using them that well. We're not going to be interacting with them. So name, type, nature, cuteness, value. Thank you for making that up, students. Oh, I'm going to have to move it now. Cuteness value is too long. Let's move these as well. Cool. Same thing for these guys. Name, type, nature, cuteness, value, and then the group box, I'm just going to call it evolution details. All right. Finally, let's name all of the text boxes. Okay. So what I do 
since this is a text box, I'm going to start with TXT and then what's going to go inside of it. So the name of the Pokemon is going to go inside this. So I'm just going to go TXT name. Please don't just call it name. You will have issues, I promise you, because it's going to conflict with everything else that's called name in your program. And there's a lot of things called name already. So TXT name for the text box, which is going to store their name. Then TXT type. Oh, why are you going in text? You bugger. TXT type. Okay, TXT nature. TXT cuteness value. And we're pretty much done. If I spelt that correctly? Yes, I have. Under the evolutions, we can't call it TXT name again because it already exists up here. So what I'm going to do is call it TXT evolution name. And then TXT evolution type. I know that seems tedious, but... That's just the way it rolls. Evolution nature and TXT evolution cuteness value. All right. That's it done. Okay. I'm going to let you have a chance to pause the video and fill out all of those labels and rename all those text boxes because I want to continue. I'm going to quickly rename this form at the top with a text at least to Pokemon details because it looks like crap at the moment. There we go. Pokemon details. All right, what's going to happen if we go to our Form 1 design, when I double-click on one of these bad boys, any of them in fact, it's going to open up Form Pokemon with Evolution, and then it's going to fill in that form with info. So it's going to do two things. First of all, show it, and then call on a sub or a function which is going to fill in the form with information, similar to the way we did Get All Pokemon. So I'm going to just do it on List ID. Now... This isn't what I want. I don't want select index change. I want to be able to double click on the list box and bring up the form Pokemon with evolutions. So again, change the event up here in the top right to mouse double click. And let's show form Pokemon with evolutions. That's all you have to do. Form Pokemon with evolutions dot show. Start, double click, and there he is. So obviously there's no details in it at the moment. But that's going to be the next thing that we do. So when you're ready, go to database.vb. Let's go underneath get all Pokemon. Let's keep him. We're not changing him at all. And I'm going to go sub get Pokemon with evolution. All right. So this is almost going to be exactly the same as get all Pokemon. However, we're going to filter the, po the information we want to one Pokemon only. So let's just get details of selected Pokemon. So the way we do that is you build your query string. So let's build our SQL query. That's going to be dim q as string equals select star from Pokemon. As you can tell, nothing's changed. But then we go where ID equals and then you put a specific ID number. So like one. One will always get me Beedrill. Okay. So I'm just literally going to test this. We're going to change this. So I'm going to put it to do change the ID to what the user selected. So we're going to come back and change that in a bit. But we're going to create the command to execute. So create command. Wow, I can't spell today. So dim command as a new, and you're going to see this lots, OLEDB command. In brackets, you put Q and connection. And it's the same thing that we did up above. And then same thing, reader dim reader as OLEDB or data reader equals execute reader. Same two lines that we had up in get all Pokemon. However, now we need to read the details of the Pokemon. So read the single Pokemon's details. And to do that, we don't need a while loop because we know we should only receive one Pokemon. We could potentially hit errors here as well if we get zero Pokemon. But I'm ignoring errors for the moment. Let's go reader.read without a while loop. So that's just going to get the first result. So I'm saying select from Pokemon where the ID equals 1. Let's quickly go to the database. The only one with ID is Beedrill. So I'm only going to get one record. So when I hit reader.read, it's going to get all of Beedrill's information. And now I'm going to jam all of Beedrill's information inside my form Pokemon with evolution. Similar to what we did before. Form Pokemon with evolution dot text name. Don't forget dot text on the end equals reader um, name. Like so. 
and we do the same thing for the next three. So one, two, three. So type nature and cuteness value. No spaces. And then change the text box it goes into. So text type text nature txt cuteness value. Before we try this out, we're going to do two things. Close the reader, just at the bottom. And then go to form one's code and call get Pokemon with evolution just there. So it's only going to get Beedrill stuff at the moment when I double click on the list box. So I'm double clicking on the list box, show the form, get all the information for Beedrill and put it in the form. There it is. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now we need to be able to check the evolution details. Okay. How do I know if he's got an evolution? Let's go back to database because we're going to keep coding right here. Now it's time for the evolution. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, if you need time to finish up anything you're doing there or fix any errors, please pause the video and do that now because I want to keep programming. And I'm just going to show you one quick little thing before we do anything. If evolution is zero, I'm saying there is no evolution. So we need to double check if the evolutions column is greater than zero, they have an evolution to pick from. Okay, so if I find the cocoon has got evolution one, I'm going to be printing cocoon at the top and beetle down the bottom. Now it's a bit silly of me to start coding the evolution if we're only getting beetle's information at the moment. So we're going to do this to do. Change the ID to what the user selected. So let's get rid of all that. Okay, ID equals one. Where are we going to get the ID, the user's selected ID? It's coming from LST ID, which is on form one. So we're going to go at the end of this, get rid of one, and go end form one LST ID dot selected item. Not index, item. Okay, if we press play now, hopefully, when you double click on one of these numbers, it'll bring up their details. So that was Charmander. Double click on Charizard. Exactly. And Mew. That's exactly how we want it to act. So now we're getting, I want you to get that working and let's move on to the evolution. So if the reader's evolution, did I say evolution or evolutions? Yes, I put an S on the end. So make sure you get that right. So if reader evolutions is greater than zero, then we have an evolution to get. All right. So what we've actually got to do, we're basically doing all of this stuff again, but just for the evolution details. All right. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go Q equals select star from Pokemon, where ID equals the evolution. So we're going to steal, it's going to be this bit now. It's not coming from the list box. So if evolution says five, it's going to get all the details from the fifth ID. All right. Perform the command again, but because we've created one, we need to go command equals a new command. Q and connection, same crap, different story. And then reader, because we've already dimmed it, equals command execute reader. All right, so it looks very similar, but you're just not dimming this time around. Okay, read the info. So let's go reader.read. And let's put all that details onto the next set of text boxes. So it's pretty straightforward. Same with this guy here. In fact, I'm going to copy these lines, these four, and paste them here. And I'm going to change the text box the details go into. Because we're no longer going to have the original Pokemon's name, type, nature, and cuteness value. We're going to have the evolution's name, type, nature, blah, blah, blah. So... We're now putting it into evolution name, evolution type, evolution nature, etc., etc., etc. So paste, paste, paste. And you don't need to put reader.read or reader.close, I mean, because we're doing that here already. Now that should work automatically if it's set up correctly. So pause the video if you still need to type, but I'm going to hit play right now and we're going to test it out. Start. And there it is. Charmander, his evolution is Charmeleon. Charmeleon evolves into Charizard. If I double click on, let's say, Charizard, he has no evolution. So it doesn't appear down here at all. 
That is how you get evolution details. It's just basically two queries, one after the other. Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a new Pokemon to our database. That's going to require a whole new form, unfortunately. Okay. So what I suggest you do, let's add this form in straight away. Let's right click on Pokemon database, add Windows form. Let's call form add Pokemon. All right, make him a little bigger. Change the text at the top because I hate that. Add Pokemon. And I'm going to be really, really lame here. I'm going to go to my Pokemon with Evolution form. I'm going to copy these right here. So right click and copy. And I'm going to go back to Add Pokemon and I'm going to paste them. That's how lame I am. It means I don't have to stuff around with doing anything like that. Let's add in two buttons. So button one, this one's going to be save. Second button, that one's going to be close. All right, so let's make sure everything is set up. So name, type, nature, and cuteness value are already set up. However, we've got, because we're adding a Pokemon, we're going to have an evolutions box as well. So let's quickly name that guy as well. Evolution. All right, we're just going to have to assume the user's smart enough to put in a number and not a name or whatever like that. Let's make sure the text boxes are named properly. Text name text type, text nature, text cuteness value, and let's change this guy to text evolutions. All right, let's set up the buttons as well. Button one should be button save. Come down here and put save onto the button. Button two should be button close. Come down, change this guy to close, and we are ready to go. Okay, the only real code we're going to add to this form is going to be the save and the close. But before we do any of that, let's add some code to our database module, which is going to allow us to actually add to our database. Come down underneath Get Pokemon with Evolution. Let's go Sub, Add Pokemon. All right. Once again, we're actually about to add some bad code because we're going to talk straight to the form, but cheap and nasty, let's get it done. How do you add stuff to a database? You use an insert into function right there. Then you have the name of the table. Then you have the fields that you want to insert. Then you write the word values. And in the brackets, you have the values that you want to insert. Okay? Break this down for you. The fields are what we're going to be inserting into the database. So, for example, we're going to be adding a name, a type, a nature, a cuteness value, and an evolutions. So we're going to have to specify all those fields in there. And then in the values section, you put all of the different values that you're going to be using. This is going to look really disgusting when we write it. However, if you get the syntax correct, it works really, really easily. So let's set up our query string just here. So build SQL query. And let's go dim q as string equals insert into, and then the table name, so it's Pokemon or whatever you called yours, open brackets, and then specify what field you're going to be inserting. So we're going to be inserting name, then comma type, comma nature, comma cuteness value. I always forget that one for some reason. And then finally, the evolutions. But then we need to put the values in there. So let's put a space just there, because I've run out of space here. What I'm going to do is put an ampersand at the end and just continue this down below. You don't have to do this, but you can if you want to. Okay, so we insert into Pokemon all the fields that we want. Let's go, and then values, the actual word, and open and close some brackets. Now, this is going to be the hard part. The values are coming from the add Pokemon form inside those text boxes. So it's going to be really, really ugly when we type this in. Because basically, if we want to add a new Pokemon, you've got to put apostrophes around the name. So let's say I'm adding in, I don't know, Dingle. That would be the name with apostrophes around it. Then the type would have apostrophes around it as well. And the nature, why not, angry, apostrophes around it. The cuteness value, you don't put apostrophes around because it's a number. So I'm going to go minus 10. Let's say I don't have an evolution, so it's going to be zero. If I ran that right now, it would actually add a dingle into my database. So I'm actually going to leave that for the moment. 
and we're going to create the commands like we've always done. So demo command, what are you doing? As a new OLE DB command with Q and connection inside the brackets. Now this time, we're not expecting anything to come out of the database. Before we were asking for records of information, now we're telling the database what this new record is. So you don't need a reader. What you do is just go command execute non-query. And believe it or not, that's all you do. The hardest thing is literally just getting this SQL statement 100% correct. So when you execute it, it works. So let's do two things. First of all, let's add the code to our Add Pokemon form. In the Save button, I'm going to call Add Pokemon, and then I'm going to close the form. So it's me.close. I'm also going to add the code for the Close button, which is just going to be simply me.close. Pretty difficult stuff, isn't it? Now the biggest problem is, right now, I've got nowhere in my program to get to this Add Form. So on Form 1, we'll add a button which opens up the Add Form. So let's go to Form 1 Design, add a button to him, just down the bottom here, and let's say Add, and name him Button Add, and add the code under him to just show the Form Add Pokemon. So Form Add, Show. If you need time to catch up again, pause the video, and let's press Play and try this bad boy out. Now, all I'm expecting is it to add Dingle into the database. So let's click Add, and then close it. Oh, sorry, I had to click Save, didn't I? Sorry. No errors. So it's gone through the Add Pokemon sub perfectly fine. To test it, close the program and press Play again. And there I am. Okay, it's added me in perfectly. Every time I click Save right now, it's going to add Dingle instead of what's in the text boxes. So we're going to replace that in a second. Right now, what I want to do is every time we add a Pokemon, it's not refreshing. As it, you just saw, I had to reopen the whole program to see if it added something in there. So how do we get around that? Well, realistically, what we do is on Form Add Pokemon, when we close the form, just about to close the form, we call Get All Pokemon again. So we add the Pokemon, we refresh the main screen, and then we close the form. However, there's going to be one issue, and I'm actually going to show you what it looks like. So let's press play. Let's click add, and I'm going to add a second Dingle Pokemon. Why not? But here's the problem. It adds every single thing again. So there's two Dingles, which is fine, but you can see all this data is repeated all the way down. This is really, really easy to fix. If you go to your database, and let's go to get, get all Pokemon. Let's go back to this guy. Whoa, man. Okay. Before we even build the query string, let's clear the list boxes. So list ID, oop, form one, list ID dot items dot clear. And we do that for every single list box. So one, two, three, four, list names, list types, list natures, list cuteness values. I'm going to add a third dingle to my program just to test to make sure this guy works. Okay, so let's go add, go save, and there's the next guy. All right, now let's modify our add Pokemon to get the information that was on the add Pokemon form. Close him up. Let's jump down to add Pokemon. And it's this bit we need to change. We need to replace each one of these values with a text box that's on the other form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on Dingle. I'm going to put quote mark space a quote mark. And it looks really ugly. But what I'm going to do is now put in an ampersand and another ampersand. And in between these two ampersand, you put the name of the text box. This is how ugly it looks, and this is why I did a really dodgy version first. So, where is the text box? It's on form add Pokemon dot txt name dot text. Wow, that looks really bad. Because the line is already getting really long and it's going to get even longer, I'm going to quickly press enter next to this quote mark and start again down here. Again, for teacher, quote mark space quote mark, ampersand space ampersand, and then put the type text box in there. 
TXT type dot text. Go down the next line, and then this is nature space. Whoop, get rid of that one. Ampersand, ampersand. Form add Pokemon text nature dot text, and then minus ten is the next one. So go down a line. Quote mark, quote mark. Stop putting spaces there. Ampersand, and then form add Pokemon. Uh, TXT cuteness. Hopefully, because it's a text box, it won't cause any issues. And then this is the last guy. So, quote mark, quote mark, ampersand, ampersand, form add Pokemon TXT evolutions dot text. That is why I did three dingles to start with because I didn't want to show you this straight off the bat. Hit play. Let's pray to God this works. Let's go to add. Let's add in a new Pokemon. Let's call it Poodle. He is type fluffy. Nature, fluffy. Cuteness value, minus 500. Evolutions, let's say he turns into, um, what ID is Dingle? Seven. Let's say a poodle evolves into Dingle. Save. And look at that, it's worked perfectly. I can even double click on poodle, and it brings up all his information. I hope that made sense, everybody, because that's the end of this video. If you have any errors, post them down below in the comments. But make sure you've caught up because in the next video, we're going to be looking at editing and deleting Pokemon. So, see you in the next video, everyone. Bye.